Welcome to Swolehammer, and we got to do our very own Swole Cry tournament thanks to our lovable big man Rico. In this vlog, we cover the tournament itself, some post tournament thoughts, and a player interview with the person who got first place. So buckle in, there's a lot of fun to be had here. Riley, it's the last round. What are you thinking of the tournament so far? I think it's hype. I think it's uh, it's going to be close for first place. I think it's, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Lots of crazy rolls, lots of war cry fun. moments. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and also just like, a lot, like you said, a lot of actually it's getting real close. Yeah. And it's been really fun. The war bands are varied. Lots of war, like actual war cries. War Half bands. of them are war cry war bands and they're actually kind of slapping. So it's good to see. Everyone's having a good time. Last round. Let's see what happens. They're in the zone. We have tie for a favorite player. Really? Ray. Oh, Jay. Oh. Woo! Hey, Ray and Jay. Nice. Hey. 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 Guys, we have top three, so all of you guys come up here and take a picture. But uh, hey. Amos Cheney, third place. Nice. Hey. Clap more. <laughs> Dave Lee, second place. LA. <laughs> and then first place and best painted goes to oh, Matt what? Johnson. Oh, thanks. Hey. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Be so sure. small compared to you too. <laughs> you want to go in the middle? I'll go in the middle. So it, looks, it looks even worse. Then. Yeah, <laughs> right. In front of the product, gentlemen, face this way. Oh, true, face true, me. True, 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 true. We're always selling. We're trying to make sales. <laughs> always be selling. Wow. Hello, and we are done with the tournament at Drawbridge. Swole Cry, our first tournament that we ever TO'd. It was a great time. Like, it was actually really fun to TO. We're going to have a series talking about TOing events with Matt, who you just saw, because he's the kill team aficionado at our other LGS. But yeah, just to run through, we have battle plans all from the core rulebook No Corner, Reaper, and Ley Lines. Um, no, we didn't want to do treasure stuff because it feels more swinging than Warcry is. Uh, which on that point, we did no monsters, thralls, or allies. Yeah. Make it as simple as possible. Also just like, let's cut the chaff. It's our meta, like, so let's like try to form it into something that we just talked about in our other video. So one thing that we wanted to do that was, I think pretty helpful for the players was we had a printout at every table that kind of like went through the different uh, battle plans. Uh, universal abilities, universal reactions. Yeah, and I had a printout of the secondary objectives and the tournament scoring. Um, just wanted to make sure there's a lot of nomenclature for people to be able to reference it so there's no mistakes, um, you know, very little room for error, and also just being kind of helpful as an organizer. And I think people really appreciated that, and we appreciate a lot of the feedback uh, because like I said, start out with people like loved it. They had a good time. We had six people come out. We could have pushed um, to have us play for eight, but we just chose to keep it just to us. Like, and we'll get into it in like our TO series, but like I personally th feel, and Riley also feels that if you're TOing, you should TO. Don't play unless you like, to, unless you're playing like ringer games or something. And I think sometimes there's merit to like, uh, to playing in your own tournaments if it's smaller and you're trying to grow a community. Um, I know that Matt usually plays in his uh, kill team tournaments. Um, I think just because it, it took a little while to get kind of traction there. And well, he like hand, he like grew that community himself. Yeah, so he makes... taught like everyone to play. He put in the work, so it's like 
you you did this so that you could play in tournaments, so I think that's completely valid. Our top three, as you saw, was uh, Slaves of the Darkness, Spire Tyrants, and Iron Golems. And uh, you will see our interview with Matt. We talked, we sat down and talked to Matt. It was really cool. But yeah, I mean, what are your thoughts on the tournament? And, you know, would you want to do more? I want to do more. Um, it's funny because we were talking about if we did more tournaments, like if people liked them and wanted more, um, one, we would do them. But two, we were thinking about future tournaments. We were going to do only Warcry Warbands. Yeah. Uh, because they kind of were balanced around each other and Warcry is not balanced. So um, it, take the one element where it's competitive against each other. But How, However... Like, the Warcry Warbands, at least, I mean, it was a small tournament with some new players. Um, and, and people were kind of playing whatever the hell they wanted. Yeah, and half the people who who came were playing Warcry Warbands, but they performed really well. They performed better than I expected. I feel like you can kind of get a lot more legs out of them than you used to be able to, I think. Yeah. They also got buffed a little bit. Like, the, they definitely yeah. got a little bit better. Um, we... From like we weren't watching every game super particularly, but there was definitely like less swinging moments, and um, only one of our players, who was the uh, Spider Fang Grot player, which was really fun, was the only one with extreme movement. And <clears throat> thankfully, like it wasn't a it it didn't really abuse a lot of stuff. Um, so it was good to see that we had pretty much everyone like on even uh, playing level. Getting getting the most out of their abilities and reactions. And it's just really cool to see that yeah. like everyone kind of tried their hardest and like nothing felt like a blowout. Nothing felt really bad for people. Um, which kind of, it's funny because that happens in a lot of Warcry games. Yeah, I was going to say, I know that one of the players um, who was playing Korn put a fair amount of work into his list but there were some like some moments where like the dice just weren't there and i think that um that ended up impacting his performance like just like war cry moments like we like to call them yeah um <clears throat> the dice tell the story harder in war cry than they do in other games and i think we saw some of that today that's just something that i think you can't ultimately really escape with war cry um you can yeah. fix it but they won't so they won't <laughs> so we just this is where we live so. Yeah, but either way, we're now going to segue uh, to our interview with Matt and get his ideas and also just how cool it is to, you know, place with uh, Iron Golems and pretty much out of the box Iron Golems. See you in a bit. All right, so Swole Cry Tournament number one is done and in the books. And right here, Swole Bro Matt took first place and, did. and best painted with his Iron Golems. 63 points maxed out all three rounds congratulations thank that's you so much honestly freaking awesome yeah thanks but yeah tell us about your rounds if yeah. you know tell us about the turn you you know how you enjoy it and your yeah. opponents and stuff absolutely iron golems in general yeah sure so the team that i ran was just iron golems uh not quite out of the box i did have to pick up the signifier because the box makes you choose between the signifier and the second in command not the prefect or whatever his name is but so, for all intents and purposes, purposes though it's like it's there's this isn't like you bought three boxes no and, not and, at all in exactly Spanish. It was like mostly out of the Pretty box. much just all the specialists and two shield boys for the Iron Legionnaires. So yeah, so it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Dev, thank you for running the event, obviously. Rafiq did yeah, a great job. Of course, thank um, you. This was a ton of fun. Really nice being on your Drawbridge games. Yeah. Uh, if you guys are in the area, check it out. Yeah, Fantastic. thanks Rico for yeah, having Rico, us. Rico, wherever he is. <laughs> um, but yeah, so game one was Corpus Cabal. Never played against this team before. Um, Ray, great opponent. Um, one thing I noticed as he was going over his army, um, as he was explaining, was really high movement. You had a 10-inch 10, 10 movement of the big bird guy. Uh, so I'm like, okay, that's a threat. Um, so what I did was I knew I wasn't going to be able to catch him, right? Four-inch movement, 5-inch uh, on the um, drill master is the best I get. So what I did was I'm going to have to bait him out. First activation, I had initiative. I threw the signifier right in the middle and tried to, like, talk him up as if he was, like, a big threat. Not to my opponent, but I made him pop his little extra toughness. And I'm like, okay, he's just going to get in there and try to soak damage and bait stuff in exactly what happened he ended up putting four models within all within three inches of each other right around it he killed it but then um turn uh two whenever the um drill master came in in dagger or whatever it was uh was able to um double move up and do a quad five i think under four models and they are 10 models so already you're looking at four models at half out so i think that was kind of that was decided by then at that point that was the the killing one or not killing one the four four, four quadrant yeah, no, mission right no quarters yeah by the time that turn four came around he had three models left i knew i would be able to space out and win it off so that was game one um super mobile ray was a great opponent really cool rules for them uh game two was just good old gobbos the gets um it's jonathan 
Uh, so he was just here, really great opponent. Yeah, works spy, here. Spider riders uh, specifically, yes. uh, lots of spiders. He ran three. He ran that with the spider boss, uh, the poison guy, and th at least three or four goggles and one of the net, net. The, the net guys, which I was just going to talk talk on. Yeah, I didn't respect that at all. Um, he. I was kind of wondering why he deployed so many to one side of the board, but he was playing around my Ogryn, which was coming in on round two. So by the time my Ogryn gets on the board, there was a Gobbo with the spider waiting for him. All you have to do is roll a three up, and he got it. Ogryn, totally relevant for the whole all of turn two. Yeah, and I mean, I, this is something that Riley, who's behind the camera right now, got, as we always say, four out of Depticon last year, but she ran three netters, yeah. and the netters are nasty. Such good value. That's a 55-point model that can potentially tie up and reduce the value of a, what is my, um, over in 230, 240? Like, yeah, that's and insane. Four eight. It's like your, yeah. most, your biggest so, hitting guy was out of, and I was actually exactly. like, when I saw that, because he might have got, he almost got it for the second round. That's what I was going to talk about, yeah. And I, I was like, lucky. that would have swung. 100%. Hard. 100%. Yeah. I had won the middle by that point. The boss kind of got tied up. I was able to get like double swings with my um, with my leader against him. But had he was able to tie up that Ogren, that side of the board probably goes to his favor. I don't get as many points in that. That was the killing one. That the one was the killing one. one. Yeah, and that was one thing I was worried about, too, is you got point efficient gobos. Had he brought more of them, I probably would have been screwed. Those are 55 points tying up and even if i kill him that's only 55 points my stuff's worth like 100 yeah so yeah so that was a big deal super fun opponent that was a good game finally uh slaves of darkness amos and game three this was scary um you look across the board at that army that's toughness six almost across with lots of shields yes. um the only thing i had going for me was just two attacks on that halberd weapon so that's the chaos warrior with the halberd um so i knew i'm like okay a lot of my damage is not going to be through direct it's going to be through my gimmicks and from counter and that's exactly what I did. I don't think um, Amos respected the normal legionary enough um, just from countering. I never planned on swinging with that legionary. Strength three, three attacks, one four. Like, that's a terrible profile. But if you keep willingly swinging into him, I'm going to counter every time. Um, and that's exactly what it was. Um, that's how I was able to get a lot of damage through. And then when I needed something dead quick, um, spine crushing blow, the double that golems have, uh, both the leader and the uh, second in command get it, whatever the value was. I get to add that strength to their weapon and that crunch through any six toughness I needed to. So that was the swing that I was able to get. And uh, and then and that actually got to use the bolas, which are usually terrible. <laughs> uh, a double where I roll two dice on a four plus it's one damage and a six, it's whatever the value is. But I only needed to do one damage at range and it did come into play. So yeah. there you go. Uh, not typically useful, but, that, but, yeah, but by then I was just able to swarm bodies. That was the objective one. Uh, oh yeah, by the way, I didn't lose a single. Um, I let... Amos have initiative every single time. So I was able just to decide what the objectives were going to be. Yeah. And I just stuck a Legionnaire in every single one. Couldn't couldn't take me off. But and yeah. It's extra crazy, too, because Slaves of Darkness seemed, especially after we like looked at all the reactions and the toughness, Riley played some Slaves of Darkness in AOS and in Warcry, and it's like, they're a scary team. Like, mm -hmm. six toughness, like you were saying. They have some high damage dealers. Uh, Amos didn't really have, they didn't have a Varengard. Nope. So it was, there wasn't that high damage, but it was scary to see like the amount of bodies that um that would not get wiped off the board but you got through yeah, it which yeah. is crazy uh -huh. yeah like, was... when i saw the end result you lost one yeah and amos's <laughs> board was empty it's practically gone right yeah, it was, and... uh, yeah. out of all sorry okay. out of all the matchups i saw all day because i was i was going around watching everyone's that was the most surprising to mm -hmm. me i thought it was gonna be like really close but like it was crazy how much you killed yeah it was really impressive as well i knew the um the drill master wasn't gonna do me a whole lot there because at no point is i knew amos wasn't gonna bunch up bunch up at any point right yeah. and um me moving and doing an attack feels terrible i had to make amos come to me so once again i knew the drill master wasn't gonna do me a whole lot i made it seem like the drill master was gonna be scary i'm like oh look three inch range i'm hitting him at far i was even thinking about doing the whirlwind and um drill master died before anything else on the board and I think that kind of like made Amos think like, okay, I could be more aggressive. But by then now you're moving into me. Um, Amos used shield bash a lot, which is sounds pretty cool, but you're moving into within an inch of me. Now I get two attacks back at you. Mm -hmm. And that happened a lot. And that was just like, okay, you want to come to me? Feel free. Okay, I'm going to double hit you now. I'm going to do um, onslaught or I'm going to do spine crushing. And it just felt great. So. Yeah. And I mean, this really speaks to like the generic abilities and reactions, counter, onslaught, rush. Those 100%. are super important. Uh, really quick question for you. Yes. How did you find the Golem's reactions, the specific reaction? Did yeah. you ever end up using that? Absolutely. The, okay. uh, like I said, Bolas only came into play in the third game. Never used it before, but that is kind of nice. No range on that team whatsoever. But if I need to kill something within six inches that I know I'm not going to be able to reach, right? Four-inch movement. I got to try to throw the Bolas out. That, that didn't help once. But the actual, the clashing iron that they have, 
did help a lot as well. I had a 12 wound against um, Signifier. He's got 18 wounds. And I used Clashing Iron, which is if you roll two crits, um, two, they both just become normal hits. A lot of weapons in this game are 1-4, right? Or 2-5 at best. Sweet I'm, damage, I'm, yeah. I'm only taking now like four damage. you got to spend that second action hitting me again instead of probably moving on to objective. And that's what I think. That was kind of the nail in the coffin was um, Amos had to spend um, a whole double activation just trying to kill one guy because he's just so tanky. Like that golem. So you can't beat that kind of tankiness um, at that price. So, absolutely. Well, yeah. I think all of the golem specific ones I've used at least once that's this awesome. entire time. Yeah. And it's awesome to see, especially one of the... OG warbands yeah. get not only do well but get first, and it's like yeah. half half the teams that uh, or half the warbands that people brought were the OG warbands. But it's, mm -hmm. it is really interesting to see this because um, third place was Fire Tyrants, and yep. it's amazing to see that like like just these OG warbands like just being able to clean up a little is really cool. You love to see it. They have more usage in Sigma right now because of Slates of Darkness updated rules, mm -hmm. but it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it makes me really happy to be able to go back. Like I said, pretty much out of the box, you took Iron Golems yeah. and got 63 points in that tournament. <laughs> yeah. And Best Painted, too. So uh, also, you know, congrats. Because oh, you, you. you finished the last model this morning. Yes, I literally finished the Signifier just this morning. He, uh, I used the Valhound Blizzard in the snow, and uh, there was like still snow in my toolbox that I transported them in. So, yeah, but he, he got done, and uh, I'm really glad that uh, people enjoy playing against me, and uh, thanks again for having it. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Thanks again. Yeah. E. So yeah, that was it. Um, I feel like you know we want to do more of these, and we're really grateful again to Rico and Drawbridge Games for reaching out and seeing our channel and being like, hey, I want you guys to do this. And it was we're really grateful for that because it's just cool to be able to do something like the whole point of this channel was to kind of like help newer players get a community together and get people playing games. And this is like a physical embodiment of it. So hopefully we can really do more of these in the future, do maybe bigger ones, even with other games. Uh, thank you everyone for coming through. Thank you everyone for watching and being interested in this stuff. And uh, as always, you know, Yeah, so yeah. thanks again. Man. Yeah, of course, yeah, it. no problem. Are you talking Whoa! shit? Ah! <laughs>